When you're shopping for panels, you're going to run into a few different shapes. And picking which shape makes the most sense for you can be a bit daunting if you don't know exactly what you're looking for. So I'm going to talk about the different shapes that are available, the pros and cons for each one, and help you pick the right shape for you. So let's get into it. Hey, this is Braden with Pickleball Effect. Looking forward to getting nerdy with you on paddle shapes. So we're gonna talk about the different shapes that are available and then how these shapes affect things like the weight slash swing weight of the paddle, its stability, its power, and then the location of the sweet spot. And then at the end, we'll tie all these things together to help you pick the right shape that makes the most sense for you. So let's start by looking at the actual shape options that are available. But when we're talking shapes, let's just define this first. A shape of a paddle consists of length and width of the paddle. It doesn't take into account the actual like design of the head, whether it's curved, whether it's square, it's just what the, it just describes what the length and width of the paddle is. So when we're looking at the USAP guidelines for paddles, it states that a paddle's total length and width cannot exceed 24 inches, and the total length of the paddle cannot exceed 17 inches. So those are the guidelines that brands are working with, and within these guidelines, three primary shapes have emerged. So you have a standard shape paddle, which is what this one looks like here. It's a little shorter, a little wider. This is 16 inches by eight inches wide. And then you have an elongated shape like this one, where it's 16 and a half inches long and seven and a half inches wide. And then you have another shape that emerged last year and got popular called a hybrid shape. So this sits in between the two. It's about 16 and a quarter inches long and about 7.7 .7 inches wide. So it's pretty small difference going from standard to an elongated. It's only about a half inch, but they actually play quite a bit differently. And we're gonna dive into those here in a second. Um, but those are the three primary shapes you're gonna run into. There are two other kind of sub-primary shapes you'll see that I'll just bring up that I won't speak to uh, as much in this video. So you have an extra elongated shape here. So this is 17 inches long. And then you have wide body shapes like this one here, where it's a little under 16 inches tall and a little over eight inches wide. So you're not gonna see as many of these two shapes, but you will see a lot of these other three. And all the principles and things I talk about that apply to these three primary shapes are also gonna extend to those two sub-primary shapes. Okay, so let's talk about how the shape of the paddle affects the weight or swing weight of your paddle. So different shapes are gonna feel lighter or heavier depending on what they are. I'm gonna use the word swing weight a lot here. If you don't know what that word means, the word swing weight represents how heavy a paddle feels. So you may have two paddles that weigh eight ounces, but one's gonna feel a little bit heavier than the other, and that's because that one has a higher swing weight. So the uh, swing weight kind of measures like the distribution of the weight and describes how head heavy or head light a paddle is. So the higher the swing weight is, the more heavy it feels, the lighter the swing weight, the lighter it feels. Then when we're looking at swing weights and shapes, standard shapes like this one are gonna be lighter, more maneuverable, while elongated paddles are gonna feel a little bit heavier and a little bit more sluggish. And then uh, the hybrid sits right in the middle. So if we're looking at the actual numbers, I have a paddle database on my website where I've measured the swing weights of over 100 different paddles, and I've taken an average of what the swing weight numbers are for standard, hybrid, and elongated shapes, and here's what they are. So the average swing weight for a standard shape is 111, the average swing weight for a hybrid shape is 115, and then the average swing weight for an elongated shape, like this one, is 120. So I would say anything 120 or above is when it starts to feel heavy. I would call those head-heavy paddles. Anything in that 115 to 120 range is gonna be considered like a mid-weight paddle, and then anything below 115 is gonna be considered more of a headlight, very easy, very light paddle. So you have a very linear relationship here. The shorter and wider the paddle, the more maneuverable and lighter it's gonna feel. Then as it gets longer, it's gonna feel a little bit heavier. So now let's talk about how a shape affects the forgiveness and stability level of a paddle. So much like swing weight, we have a linear relationship here. The shorter, the wider the paddle is, the more stable and forgiving it's gonna be. The longer the paddle is, the less stable and a little less forgiving it's gonna be. When we're talking about the stability and forgiveness level of a paddle, a number that you will see come up often is twist weight. So twist weight is a measurement that indicates how stable a paddle is and the, its ability to resist movement from side to side on off-center hits. So the higher the twist weight, the more resistance a paddle has to twisting on off-center shots, which is an indication of how forgiving a paddle. It's not the only thing that's going to determine the size of the sweet spot, but it gives you a good idea of how stable and forgiving a paddle is. So like swing weight, a standard shape paddle is going to have a higher twist weight than an elongated shape. And it's just this linear relationship, very similar to what we saw with swing weights. The shorter, the wider the paddle, the higher the twist weight, the more forgiving it's going to be. The longer the paddle typically gives you a lower twist weight and a little less stability. So that's how shape affects the forgiveness and stability of a paddle. Now let's talk about power. 
So with power, this one's pretty simple. As the paddle gets longer, it's gonna generate more power. Shorter, wider paddles just don't give you as much oomph on shots from the baseline and overheads. If you think about it, this makes sense. A longer paddle has more leverage. You're gonna be able to add a little more whip, plus longer paddles are heavier, so you get a little more plow through and a little more mass behind the ball that way. So the longer the paddle is, uh, the more uh, power it's gonna offer you. However, if you have a series of paddles, let's say the Selkirk Vanguard controls, where we know that this whole series is a control style series, though they offer different shapes. The standard shape isn't gonna be as powerful as the elongated, but the, it's not so different that the elongated paddle is not a control paddle anymore. The series is still gonna remain a control series. The length isn't gonna change a control paddle to a power paddle, but within that series, the longer paddle is gonna give you a little bit more power from the baseline than a standard shape paddle would. Now let's talk about sweet spot location. So when we're looking at these three primary shapes, there's only a half inch difference in length between the three of them. And it doesn't sound like very much and you wouldn't think that it makes that big of a difference, but it does because the sweet spot location is different on each paddle. So on a longer paddle, the sweet spot's gonna sit up higher on the face. Whereas on a standard shape paddle, the sweet spot's gonna sit a little bit lower on the face. And because the sweet spot's in these different locations, that's what makes the paddles feel so different when you play them. So when you go hit a standard shape paddle versus an elongated paddle, yes, they're only a half inch difference in length, but because the sweet spots are in different locations, it feels more like an inch or an inch and a half difference in length because of the sweet spot being higher on this and lower on this one. So just know that when you're playing with these, the sweet spot locations are gonna be in different spots. And then with the hybrid, it's gonna sit right in between those two, right about here. So that's something to keep in mind when you're selecting shapes. And finally, let's talk about selecting the right shape that makes the most sense for you. So when we go through the things I talked about today, so you have the swing weight of the paddle, you have the stability and twist weight of the paddle, its power level, and then the location of the sweet spot, you need to prioritize what's most important for you. So if maneuverability and having a light paddle is important to you, then you need to get a standard or a hybrid shape because those are lighter and faster. If power and plow through is the most important to you, then get either a hybrid or an elongated shape. If you're looking at forgiveness and want something that's stable and easy to play with, then I would recommend either a hybrid or a standard shape. And then if you're just thinking about reach, you just want something that's a little bit longer, you need help covering the court, you wanna be able to generate some offense by reaching into the kitchen, then get in either a hybrid or an elongated shape and then picking between those two kind of comes down to the forgiveness level you want and the weight preference you have. So if you want a little lighter paddle, go with the hybrid. If you want that extra power, a little extra reach, then go with the elongated. If you're brand new to the sport and you don't know what to get, then I'd recommend a hybrid. It's just a nice blend between the two. You're gonna get a little extra reach without giving up too much forgiveness. And it's a good baseline paddle to start. And if you're coming from a tennis background or any other sort of racket sport background, you're probably gonna prefer a hybrid or an elongated shape just because those are gonna feel a little natural to you. The sweet spot being a little further from your hand is gonna feel familiar to you. So you, I would recommend those two shapes. One other way to look at it is to ask yourself this question. When you hit the ball, where do you miss hit the ball? Are you miss hitting it towards the tip of the paddle or are you miss hitting it towards the sides? If you often miss it towards the tip of the paddle, then you're gonna want a longer shape. So a hybrid or elongated is gonna make more sense for you. But if you're missing it on the sides, then I would take a closer look at either a standard or a hybrid shape. So there you go, I hope that helps. Please go check out my website and look at my paddle database where I have all the swing weight, twist weight metrics listed out there. I also have all the shapes listed out so that you can filter by these things and narrow down your search when you're finding the perfect paddle for you. Thanks for watching and I hope it helps.